Hey, this is Carrie G at Studio R12 Stencils, and today we're going to show you how to go from this to this, including how to treat your surfaces so that they'll be safe on your porch in all the seasons, and we have some amazing stenciling techniques that you're gonna to want to have in your tool belt. Okay, the first thing we are going to start with is prepping our surface. So if you've been watching our videos on here, a lot of times we paint on MDF and we don't, we rarely prep those. But when it comes to pine, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We just went to our local hardware store and asked them to cut us a six foot tall, 12 inch wide, one inch thick piece of pine. And that will fit our porch stencils. All of them are six by 12 inches for you since that is a standard size. One thing you are going to want to do is check it before you leave the hardware store. This piece of pine that we got has a little crack at the bottom. So what will happen with that is when it's out on your porch and it gets cold and it's going through the elements, you will have that a chance of that crack expanding up into your board and potentially ruining your project. You also might want to grab a piece of sandpaper and a sanding block. This is an affiliate link and we can share this below for you. And it is our favorite thing for sanding. We just have a really light grit sandpaper on here and we will go with the grain of the wood and just make sure it's nice and smooth before you start painting. You'll especially want to look at the edges. So wherever it was cut, there might be some scraggly pieces at the top and bottom of the surface that you'll want to smooth out before you start painting on it. So the first thing that we're doing with this board is we're going to show you how to treat the knots. And let me show you why. Rusty, can you grab me that? Um, porch sign please okay so check this check this one out this one is one that we did quite a while ago it's been here for for a few years it was one of our first porch signs that we painted but look at all the knots and how they have bled through the paint so this was before we knew this was going to happen but Thankfully, we now have a trick that it won't happen to you. How we treat those is with a product called the Bullseye Shellac. And what we'll do is we will just paint the shellac right over top of those knots and it will treat those so that it won't bleed through your paint. In the time that you're going to want to really not have them bleed through, is if you're using a light color anywhere on your project, whether that be the background or the lettering, because it will have the, you'll have a chance that it will bleed through both. Now, if you are going to be staining a project, then you won't necessarily need to fill the knots because the stain is just going to slightly cover the wood and change the tint of the wood. I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes the difference between staining and using acrylic paint and what that looks like. So we're just using our brush to just paint over all the knots. This board has a lot of knots. So we'll paint over them, we will let them dry, and then we will move on. Okay, the next step is going to be probably one of the most important steps to making sure that this stays safe on your porch through all of the seasons, the winter weather, the rain, all of it. And we are going to seal the project. So we have the knot sealed. Now we're going to seal the entire surface. And what you'll want for it, we use the DecoArt multi-purpose sealer. So we will pour out the sealer onto our palette paper. We will use a foam roller. The foam roller is a really great option for these big surfaces just because you have to it's such a big surface. It's going to take a while. We typically use a polyfoam brush to do our base coating. I can tell you from experience that polyfoam brushes take forever when you're painting a six foot sign. So do yourself a favor, use a roller. You'll put 
the sealer on your paper, you're gonna roll your roller through it. It will take a little bit of time and sealer to get your roller coated, but once you have it coated, then you'll be good to go, and then you can just roll it right over your entire project, and then it will take no time using the roller compared to using the polyfoam brush. Now, you will want to also make sure that you could do the sides and the top and bottom. The bottom especially is going to be where it will be moist and water can potentially get in. So you'll wanna seal the front, the back, both sides and the top and bottom. So now that our sealer is completely dried, we are ready to start painting. We're going to show you a couple different ways to base coat a porch sign. And how there's a difference between the stain versus an acrylic paint so you can see the coverage of those. So on our example, we used a, an acrylic paint for it and it gives a lot of coverage. So I'm gonna start with that. We are going to get paint on our polyfoam brush. These polyfoam brushes are amazing and the reason I'm doing a polyfoam brush instead of the roller like we just talked about is because we're just going to do a small area so we can show you the difference in these. So we're just gonna go back and forth with our polyfoam brush. We are going to be careful on the sides. Rusty, can I have you grab me that porch sign again, please? So when you're painting your porch signs, we always recommend painting both sides. So we have on this side our Merry Christmas. You can use it for the Christmas holidays. And then we have our home with our puppy, and this can be used for all seasons. So when you are painting, you are going to want to think about what you might paint on the other side or go ahead and already have a plan in place for that because that will determine what you do with the edges of your surface. So if you are going to paint both sides white, then you can paint your size of your surface white as well. This one's white on one side and red on the other. So you can keep it neutral on the sides. I would personally paint them black so that they are finished look. Let me see if I can get this portion in here for you guys. So you can see on this portion here, the red got paint, it went over quite a bit. So we're gonna wanna be really careful when painting our base coat to make sure that if those sides are going to remain neutral, that we're not making a mess over the sides. Here you go, Rusty. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna continue on with our base coat. And this is our acrylic paint. So you can see there's a bit of coverage here and we're just gonna go back and forth. I would probably do at least two coats of paint depending on what color we are painting it. If you are doing a red, then you might potentially have to do three or more just because the red, it takes a lot of layers to actually get that color you want. That, that Merry Christmas sign, I think I did three or four layers of red on that background to make sure that it was nice and deep and vibrant. And you'll just do really long strokes here with your brush. Let me get it here to the edges. And you can see a difference in the one coat versus the two coats. With the one coat, even of the acrylic paint, you can kind of see the grain still popping through your paint. <clears throat> and that's just really gonna be personal preference. Some people like to be able to see the grain, some people like for it to be covered. It is also going to depend on what you're doing with your project as we were working on prepping this one, we talked about how we are going to use snowflakes on the background. And if you use an acrylic paint and get more coverage, those snowflakes might show up a little bit better than if you use the stain. So we're gonna test that theory out as well. So now I have the acrylic portion on one section and I'm going to go into the stain on the next. I'm gonna pick up the stain and with the stain, I'm only going to do one layer. 
And you can see with the stain that those knots still pop through. Okay, so we ended up doing three layers of the acrylic on this side just so we could get a lot more coverage after two layers it still ended up you could still see a little bit through the original wood so we wanted to make sure that it was fully covered fully painted now on the stain side you can see a couple of things here one you can see where we put the shellac to cover the knots when we were showing you the example for that and you can see that the knots are still going to pop through the stain because it doesn't fully cover it. The stain just adds a sheen, sheer layer of color over top. So if you are going to be staining, then we would not recommend covering the knots because you are going to see them anyway. And you can see that the stain doesn't penetrate the shellac so you have some little areas that you can see where we did that okay our next step is to add some dreamy snowflakes to the background of this project this is one of our favorite stencils we use this snowflake stencil on so many things it has several different sizes it has several different shapes you can use it on everything from backgrounds to um, christmas cards to wrapping paper and we have videos of us doing all of those things. So be sure to check out our video list and we'll link some of those for you. But this is just really fun to add a little bit of depth and dimension to your project. And you don't have to go into it being perfect about placement. That's one of the fun things about stenciling is that you can really make it whatever you want. We have more than 6,000 titles on our website on studio12.com. Most of our stencils come in at least five different sizes from small to big to some of them are jumbo like this top porch sign. So you can really be creative and mix and match and put your stencils together. That's what we did with this when we said, well, what would look good with this porch sign with the, the little gnome? And so we're like, ah, oh, we have to add snowflakes. So let's do a little bit of stencil basics. In Studio R12, we use a dome brush. A lot of stencilers use a flat brush, but we have found that that increases your chances of bleeding under. So with a dome brush, the sh shape of the brush is cut in a dome all the way around. So instead of having it flat with the potential for all of the bristles to go under your stencil and bleed under, with the dome brush, it's domed. So when you are stenciling, the tip of the brush is really the only portion that is hitting, whether you are doing a swirling motion or a stippling motion. We did a tutorial recently where we were trying to bleed under to show how to fix it. And granted, we work really hard on not bleeding under, but we had a hard time bleeding under even when trying because the dome brush is so great at just being on the tip of it. So we will get a little bit of our paint onto our brush. We will come to a paper towel, and this is a crucial point. You're going to swirl off most of your paint onto your paper towel. So you're gonna do about 15 swirls. You'll know if you have the correct amount of paint when you go on your hand and it has a light dusty look if it is wet and it's kind of goopy that means you have too much paint so we're going to swirl off now with this stencil we typically tape our stencils down with stretchy tape just so we can be sure that they don't move however with this one since we are just doing it really light and since we are going to be moving it around i typically wouldn't do it just because it's going to be very quick so if you are going to tape down you're going to want to tape on two sides so that if you try to move the stencil it won't go anywhere and then we're going to come in our stencil and we are going to do a light swirling motion over top of our stencil we are barely applying any pressure for two reasons one we don't want to bleed under 
And two, I really want these snowflakes to look dusty. We don't want them to be completely bold and bright. Now, I will say, as you can see on our sample, we did some bold, we did some dusty, and what that will do is it will give you a dement, like a 3D effect on those snowflakes. So it looks like some are in the background, some are up a little close. So having those being some lighter and some darker will add a little depth to your project. And you can see that I have only added paint to my brush a couple of times since I started this. I'm doing this one a little bit darker. And then as you go, and as the paint comes off of your brush, then they'll get a little dustier. But even if we're painting letters, which I'll show you here in a little bit, we are still going to do the same process where we pick up our paint, we swirl off to get most of the paint off, and then we have, we do our dusting. Stenciling is a layers game, and that is how you prevent the bleeding under, is that you don't have too much paint on your brush and you just build and build and build layer after layer. So let's peel this off and you can see our snowflakes. So now what I would do is, since we want snowflakes over the whole thing, we're just going to move our stencil. And I'm not going to do it the same over and over and over again. This time I'm going to turn it sideways and go to the next portion and get some more paint. I taped it back down. And then we're going to just start stenciling again. So just like real snowflakes, it's not going to be exactly the same time after time. And you can actually say we just want to paint a couple of these you don't even have to paint them all maybe you want one repeated and then you can just choose which ones you paint and where they are going to go it might also be something to think about when you're prepping your project that you know there are letters right up the middle that maybe the ones that you do in the middle are a little more dusty so that your letters pop and then the ones that you do around the edges are a little bolder and brighter so that they aren't taking away from the actual stencil. So I am going to do a second layer on these. I wanna show you what the difference is on doing one layer of the snowflakes compared to two. So I think this little guy right here needs to be a little darker. We're gonna make him a little closer for us. So we're just gonna come back in here, go a second layer, and we are gonna swirl. Now there's also a method of stenciling called stippling, and it's a tapping method. With what we are looking for with this dusty snow, I would not recommend that method because when you stipple, it offers you a lot more coverage a lot quicker. So when you stipple, it's like doing multiple layers at one time and it is going to be super bold. So we're gonna take this off and you can see this is the one that I added a second layer of swirling and this is the one that I stippled. And then you can see what these other ones look like. So applying different pressure throughout is what is going to give you that 3D effect of adding the snow onto your project. So then we'll just continue to move our stencil around and add the snow. There's a little spot right here. So you could come in here, hold it down, and swirl here, and there you go. You have another, another snowflake. All right, so now we have all of our snowflakes done on the acrylic side and on the stain side. We weren't really sure how we were going to like the snowflakes on the stain since the stain shows through the wood grain and it's such a thin layer, but they still actually pop pretty well. You can see we did some really dark and we did some really dusty. 
And then we just moved our stencil around. So this over here, there was a little bit of a hole. So I just went and grabbed the edge of one of the snowflakes and just filled in the different spots. So we use a really high tech method when we are checking our backgrounds to see if it's what we like. We take a step back and we squint our eyes and see if there's any holes. And then you'll know where to fill in your stencils. Okay, so now it's time to paint the welcome on our sign. I do wanna show you a couple things before I start painting. Tall porch signs are tall. They're gonna be six feet tall. So what we do with these is with our tall porch sign designs, we make them in multiple stencils so that you can lay it out across your board and line up what you're going to do before you actually start painting. And I'm gonna show you a trick that we do to help you guys out. So with this one now, and this is going to kind of change depending on the design you get. With this design, what you'll want to do is you'll start painting at the bottom of the stencil. We have the E and then we have the M. And then on the second stencil that will go over top of it, we have a slight etching of the M that will show you where to line up that second stencil once you have your first one painted. And then it has a, an outline of a beard that we're gonna paint soon. And then a cutout of the nose so that you'll know where to line your gnome up later. And then you'll paint your C and then you'll paint your L. And both stencils have the L cut out so that you can line up the L that you paint on your second stencil to go up to the very top. Okay, so we're gonna start with our first stencil. We have our number three stencil taped down to our surface, top and bottom, so there is no wiggle room. We're going to grab some paint, swirl off, and I'm just gonna paint a small portion of this M so that you can see how it lines up. Now, as we're painting this, you can see that it's very dusty on our first layer and that you can actually still see your snowflakes through our first layer of paint. So what you'll want to do with this is you'll want to do several coats so that you can cover up those snowflakes that we painted in the background. So now that we have a light layer for this, we will peel this one off. I'm gonna grab my tape. You can see our in there. Now we'll go up to our second stencil, and this is where we will use the traced lines to line up where we have painted our M and know where our next stencil goes. So we'll tape right down here. The trace lines cover where we've already painted. And then I'm going to skip the nose for just this second because we already have the white paint and a white brush started. You don't want to leave your brush aside for a long time, otherwise the paint will start to dry in your brush. If you are going to be waiting, maybe you don't have a lot of brushes, you'll wanna put it in a plastic baggie and wrap it up so that you can go back to it. So now we're going to come to the sea, we're gonna get our paint, we're gonna swirl off, and then we're going to come up to our sea. And you can see it doesn't take very long, just a really light dusty layer and the dusty layers is how you prevent the bleeding under. And then I'm also going to do a light layer of the L so that we can line that one up when we put on our top stencil. I do wanna show you real quick, if we would stipple here, since this is a big surface, you can get your paint and you can stipple and you can see how quickly those snowflakes are being covered up. Now, I will say that stippling is an arm workout. You're gonna definitely get an arm muscle workout. Swirling is more of a workout in your forearm. 
So you'll let this dry. Stippling takes a little bit longer to dry than swirling. You can see that when you swirl, it almost immediately dries because it is such a light, dusty layer. And then you'll just continue to go back over and continue to stipple until that word is as bold and deep as you want it to be. So I am going to hide this under here to keep it a little wet. I'm going to grab a little bit of a neutral color so we can paint the nose of the gnome. So we've gone through quite a few brushes already. If you are painting as um, a hobby, a craft, then having a set of five brushes could be a good place for you to start. We have the dome brushes on Studio R12 on our website and you can get them in singles, you can get them in sets. The one that we use most is the 5 8 brush. It's the biggest, it covers the most area. So with this nose, I am I immediately started stippling with it because I'm trying to cover up those snowflakes. Now, when you stipple, the paint is a little thicker, so we will want to put our blow dryer on over top of it so that we can get that dried a little bit quicker for you. All right, so let's get a second layer here of our gnome nose. Okay, so I think we're good to go on that. I'm gonna put our brushes in the water. We do have a couple of videos on how to clean your brushes. We will tag those below. They are very important. Um, we were, when we were talking about brushes, um, a set of five is a good place to start. You'll want to use your brush. If you're going to use one color, like your white, you'll want to do all the things in white that you can with your one brush before you wash it out. Because once you put your brush in the water, then you wash it out. It's gonna need time to completely dry before you use it again. If you use it when it's still wet, it can increase your chances of bleeding under. So now I'm going to peel this back and we have our M, we have our nose, we have our C and you can see a little bit here how this is darker where we started to stipple and then our L. How to line up this top stencil. We'd go here to the L, line up the L here. Sometimes the lining up can be a tedious part. So then we would take this down and then we can paint the E and the W and they're going to be exactly where you need them. So now it's time to work on our gnome. This is also going to be a two part stencil and guys, these are so fun. We have our three set of gnomes and this is one of the stencils that you can get on studior12.com. It has three different gnomes, three different little hat shapes, so you can pick and choose what you want to use for this one. You can use the middle one, you can use the one with the hat to the side. Regardless of which one you do, you're gonna have a little bit of overlap because this stencil is a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to, which one did they use? They used the hat to the side. I think I'm gonna do that as well, solely because the way that this is lined up, there's a little bit more space at the bottom than the top, so the gnome nose would still be in the middle. But I'm gonna add a little bit of the one, let's do the one to the side, and I'm gonna do it on this one just solely because it's easier for me to tape it down and it be away from me than it to be over and toward me on this side of the um, table. So once we get this in place, we're gonna tape him down. I'm just gonna tape the edges here, and then we will start painting our gnome. So we have the hat, the beard, and the shoes to paint. I'm going to paint the beard today. I'm gonna to paint it a gray 
because what we're going to put over top of it is the snowflake and the mittens. So what's really cool about these is that these are interchangeable. So you can do the snowflake and mittens with the striped hat, which is what we did on the sample. You could also do, I love the little Santa hat with a wreath or the present, and you can mix and match. And we have these for several seasons. We have floral ones, we have Halloween ones, we have fall ones. So you can get this one main gnome stencil and then get all of the additional designs and have gnomes for all the seasons. And I don't, I don't foresee gnomes going anywhere. So on this sample, we did a white beard with a gray snowflake. I am going to do a gray beard. I'm gonna do it not the darkest gray because with the darkest gray, it might not show up on the dark background, but I'm gonna do a lighter gray on it so we can see what the difference between a gray beard and a white beard would look like and why you might choose one over the other. We'll start swirling here and you can already see it's covering quite a bit of area. Now I did not swirl off a lot here. So I wanna see if we can maybe make a little bit of a mistake and show you how to fix it. So one thing about these gnomes is there's a lot going on. You have really little bridging lines here, but I'm gonna show you a tool that you are going to absolutely love and want to use. In the past, we would have used tape to tape off all these little portions and that can get so tedious and you use so much tape. But we made this multi-masker tool and it is a piece of mylar that is cut in a crazy shape it has straight lines, it has jagged edges, perfect for gnome beards. It has little circles and squares, and then it has a big nose on it. So you can use this, like this nose fits exactly perfect over here. I can get some paint on my brush, and then I can put my multi-masker over top of my stencil, so that I can get right up in every edge without going over. So I did ghost a little bit because I wasn't being cautious. I'll show you how to fix that. So then you just move your multi-masker along with your project. You can use the straight edge to get on straight edges. Then you can come down here and see what fits best. Um, like maybe this one fits good right in this corner. So we'll go here. Now, one thing you do have to be mindful of when I started using this, I was so used to just um, using tape and not having to worry about moving anything that I forgot to move my multi-masker along with me. And so then um, I had some spots where I bled over and I ghosted because I wasn't moving my multi-masker. Now, with the nose portion, we already have it painted and it's a lighter color. So that's an area that you're going to want to avoid the ghosting. However, for this bottom, we're gonna do black shoes. So if you would happen to get a little bit of the gray in the black area, it's not going to be fatal for your project. So we have one layer of the little beard here. Let me peel this back. I don't like to peek, but sometimes in projects it is absolutely necessary so that you can check and see how you're doing. So we have our beard, we have our nose, but we did get a couple little spots on the nose. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to fix that. One is with a PVC eraser. This is one of our one of our favorite stenciling tools because with the PVC eraser, if you just put the eraser on the project, it doesn't do anything. However, if you get it wet and then you take it over top of your paint, wherever you made your mistake, I think I just scratched that there, then it will take away your mistakes and it makes it so easy to go back and fix things. However, there are a couple little rules with this. One, you'll only have about five minutes before the paint cures 
so that you can fix your mistakes. So that is one positive to going back and peeking and checking along the way so you can see if you did make any mistakes. And then second, you won't be able to do it after you blow dry. So if you blow dry your project, that's going to cure it and then you won't be able to use your eraser. You could also use a round brush, which we might use here in a little bit, and just get a little, I can just do a little bit here of the round brush, and then go right, or this is just a little dome brush, and go right around the nose here on this tiny dome brush, and then you can use a round brush like this to go through and just fix little spots that get messed up. Okay, so now we're gonna put our gnome back together and paint his, I think we're good on the beard. I would do an extra layer on the beard just so that it can be full coverage, but you're getting an idea of how it works. So with the shoes, we have multiple sizes for our dome brushes. They come in five different sizes from big, and I just used the teeny tiny one here, um, from big to small. So you can see the different sizes and how they, I think we actually have one more different size. Um, so you can use them on all different parts of your projects. The big one is the one we use the most, but the small one and the different sizes can be beneficial on different parts of your project. So I'm gonna use one of the smaller ones here for the shoes. We have a handy dandy paint drawer which is super beneficial to when you just need to grab something that you forgot to add. And I don't recommend ever putting your paper towel on top of your project. I'm out of space here <laughs> because your paint can bleed through if you're using a lot of paint and you don't want to get paint or water or anything on your project and ruin it after you spent so much time working on it. So now we're going to go back into our multi-masker and be really careful here and swirl. And then in this bigger area, I can stipple to get some extra coverage. And same thing with if you make a mistake, if you might happen to get a little bit of black, if maybe you weren't super duper careful, you can cover that with the little part of the multi-masker and then you can clean up your mistakes because now you know how, or you can just move on. So there, that's super cute. So there is a little bit of a difference you see between the gray beard and the white beard. The white beard pops a lot, but we're also going to do a white snowflake on it so we can see how that looks. All right, so now we are ready to paint the last little portion of our gnome. And for this stencil, since we are doing a welcome, por a welcome porch sign for winter, then we are going to choose the snowflake. So although this is a Christmas themed stencil design for these gnomes, it can go throughout all of the holidays because it has the snowflake you can do a hat with just the stripes. You can paint the hat and not do any of the extra designs with it. The beauty of stenciling. I'm gonna grab one more piece. Now, with these beards, the beards are all different shapes. So when if you're using the hat and beard from this gnome, but you're using the design for this gnome, you'll want to line up the nose because the beards are gonna be different shaped. You're gonna have a hard time lining them up. I thought when I first did it that I did something wrong and I didn't do anything wrong. I just didn't realize at the time, okay, the, the beards are a little bit different. So that's where I got into, oh, this is what we need to change. So we are going to line up the nose here with our painted nose. I'm gonna come into our white and once again, we're gonna get out our multi-masker because we have a little bit of the glove here that we do not want to paint into. So we'll just move it around until we can find a space that fits best. And come here, that fits there perfectly. And we are just gonna stipple here to get it done quicker and to get it to get more coverage 
and also their smaller areas. So a lot of times with small areas, I prefer to stipple to get it done easier and quicker and not have to go back over the little tedious spots that are going to require the multi-masker more. And since we are painting white over top of a dark beard, this is going to take a few layers so that you will actually get the coverage over top of it. If you are painting, say we would want to do the gloves in red or a green, a different color, and you're painting over really dark, then we would recommend putting a light a lighter base coat, like a really light gray over top of this to make sure that red or the green or whatever lighter color you're using really pops off that surface. So let's peel this off here so you can see what the snowflake looks like. And there we go, and he has his little snowflake. So that is your background, your, we have our base coat, we have our snowflakes, we have our welcome, we have our gnome, and then we have our snowflake over top of it. So all of the layers are almost complete, but we do have one thing left to share with you. Okay, so we are going to finish this project the same way we started it, and that is with sealing. Now, you could most certainly use a tall porch sign in your home, maybe put it by your fireplace to add a little dimension to your decor, but most people are going to use these outside. And for outside projects, we recommend using polyurethane sealers. And we also recommend using a matte varnish. If you're using something that is glossy, it could cause a glare against your project when it's outside. So we always recommend using matte. So we have used both of these in the past with the, this um, polyurethane, we will use a poly foam brush and stick it in there and just swipe it along. Or you can use the DuraClear matte varnish and put it on your palette paper. And once again, use your roller. And just like we did at the beginning, you are going to want to seal all sides of your project, the front, the back, and the sides. Now, if you are going to paint another project on the back, you don't want to seal it until you get that project painted. So keep that in mind, maybe do a little bit of planning when you are working on your next porch sign. If you like this tutorial and want to see more stencil and crafting and painting tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to the Studio R12 YouTube channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified anytime we add new videos.